Welcome back folks to a brand new video and of course a brand new year. But what better way to celebrate that than to highlight some of the most beautiful places in the UK. For more videos like this don't forget to check out the playlist. Number 1. Stonehenge A stunning prehistoric monument nestled in the Salisbury Plains in Wiltshire, England. The iconic landmark has fascinated and mystified visitors for centuries, and it still remains one of the world's most intriguing and significant archaeological sites. Its colossal standing stones weighing several tons each stand tall against the vast sky, and it forms a mesmerizing sight that transports you back in time. So a visit here offers that unique opportunity to connect with the ancient world, and there are so many people who really believe in this quite spiritually. Located in the picturesque Inner Hebrides in Scotland, the Isle of Mull is the complete package for tourists who love adventure and nature. You can visit the charming town of Togamori, with its coloured houses and independent businesses and explore miles of stunning coastline. But no matter what the Isle of Mull weather is like, you can experience the perfect island escape. To the west of Mull there are some exciting discoveries to be made, such as the tiny enchanting Isle of Iona. Number 4 we head to Wales, Brecon Beacons National Park, and that offers an authentic escape with its untouched landscapes, and landscapes which are perfect for adventure. Unlike busier tourist spots, it boasts small villas and charming inns instead of the large hotels, so if you want to get a genuine connection with nature, this is a perfect place. Nestled between the Cotswolds and in the beautiful county of Somerset, Bath is also very well known for its perfectly preserved honey-coloured Georgian houses, and this is a great day trip from London. It was granted a World Heritage Site status in 1987, now I advise you to spend a little time just walking around and exploring the well-preserved Roman baths itself. Entrance to the baths and the temple include a chance to view one of the original artifacts discovered during excavation over the decades. So if you have the time, you might even indulge in some of the natural hot springs. One of Scotland's two national parks. Cairngorm National Park sits within the country's northeast region. It's easily one of the best things to do in the Scottish Highlands. The park is a true mountain wilderness, home to five out of the six Scotland's highest peaks, and four out of the ten of the highest in Britain. It also boasts some of the most beautiful lochs and rivers, native forests, farmland and moorland as well as being a stronghold for Scotland's wildlife. There are miles upon miles of trails, and a wonderful choice of a destination to be on this list. Now this is a very interesting destination that's nestled along the rugged coastline of Cornwall in the southwest of England, and famous for its mythical connections to King Arthur. Now the main highlight of Tintagel is the castle itself, that's perched on a rocky cliff overlooking the sea. So you can explore the ruins of this medieval fortress, and you can dive in into the legends and stories that surround King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table. It boasts breathtaking views of the coastline and the wild beauty of the Atlantic Ocean. It's perfect for picturesque walks and it has beautiful beaches and there are plenty of local shops and cafes. So whether you're into history or just nature itself, a visit here promises both beauty 
and a lot of intrigue. Located just off the coast at Port Noki, Beaufort Rock is an incredible natural formation, formed by the sheer force of waves alone. Over time, the pressure of the waves in the North Sea have sculpted this popular landmark into its unique bow-shaped formation, which makes for a great photo opportunity. So this is a beautiful place to go on holiday for those of you who are keen explorers. Now we come to London, the iconic capital of the United Kingdom. Now there is a wealth of things to do in the city, but I think if it's your first time visiting, you should head to the Tower of London. Listen to the whispers of tales of royalty, and they do have some amazing tours, so definitely purchase that one. So it's a city that literally caters for anyone with all types of choices. It's set just outside the northernmost tip of the British Isles, hidden in the North Sea. The Shetland Archipelago is Britain's most distant and its most starkly stunning clutch of islands, famous for its unspoiled beaches, diverse wildlife and of course the archaeological sites. So why would you visit? Well there are very few places in the UK that feel as immediately Viking as Shetland, with a Norse-inspired place names give you that immediate sense of a long Scandinavian influence. Two of the most fascinating and romantic things are either castles and islands. Now imagine a place that is a combination of both of those very things. That place is the four-story tower called Castle Stalker. situated off the beautiful west coast of Scotland. This island's castle's picturesque placement, standing tall, is set against a dramatic backdrop of mountains, and it's made it into something of a cliché image of the Highlands. Now this is a pristine natural paradise nestled in the southwest of England an expansive park that spans across Somerset and Devon. And it offers those of you a very diverse landscape of moorlands, rugged coastlines, and plenty of woodlands. So this is where you can walk around and discover hidden valleys, plenty of rivers and waterfalls, and it's home to a variety of wildlife. So this is a very relaxing park where you can dig deep and get stuck into nature. You then can visit the seaside towns of Lynmouth and Linton, which have been popular places to visit in Devon since the Victorian era. Lynmouth, once known for herring fishing, is a pretty harbourside town with lovely walks. But another highlight is to check out the Valley of Rocks which was once home to the Devil's Castle, and that one day he came home to find his wives partying with the neighbours, so he fell into such a rage that he turned his wives into turrets of stone. Now as you cruise along the rugged coastline of County Antrim in Northern Ireland, you'll be greeted by a magnificent medieval structure perched high on a craggy headland, the legendary Dunluce Castle. Though today the castle is a ruin, its walls have played witness to a feud that's laden with romance, betrayal and tragedy. So whether you're a history buff or someone who just loves adventure, you are definitely in for a treat. It's nine miles south of the immense prehistoric stone circle we've just talked about, Stonehenge. A cathedral city of ageless beauty, a 
very captivating history. It's been welcoming travellers since 1227, and at the heart lies Salisbury Cathedral, a beacon that has attracted visitors for centuries. You see, the moment you step into this medieval cathedral, you'll encounter more than 800 years of history. But around the cathedral is a modern medieval city, full of buildings crafted with the care of another age. So here history is brought to life by modern and original events. So apart from the museums, folks, Salisbury is also a base for you to discover the surrounding countryside. Now let me tell you about this hidden gem in the Cotswolds. It's like stepping into a storybook town with its winding streets, fascinating history and very friendly vibes. So picture yourself strolling through the ancient lanes, admiring the beautiful architecture and browsing the vibrant market square. There's a sense of timelessness here that's hard to resist. But beyond the town you'll find rolling hills and charming villages that I'll just wait into explored. Number 16. A place where time seems to slow down and beauty takes centre stage. Charming stone cottages and a gentle river that flows through with little bridges. It has very peaceful streets. So this village is like an inviting escape where you can just relax and just really enjoy the simple pleasures of an English village. Loch Lomond Located in southern Scotland, Loch Lomond and the Trossachs National Park offer visitors a combination of stunning scenery and picturesque villages. One of Scotland's best obsessions. It's the largest inland stretch of water in Britain, and one of Scotland's most idyllic and unspoiled areas. The Isle of Arran. The Isle of Arran is a beautiful island set off the west coast of Scotland. Now what awaits you here are beautifully sandy beaches, rugged mountains, an abundance of outdoor activities for you and the family, ancient castles, relaxing spas. Arran's circular coastal road is around 56 miles making it easy to explore the highlights of the island over a couple of days. Scotland is a land of many different landscapes, with a great variety of nature, architecture and traditions to be seen. And one of the best ways to view this is by travelling by train. Glenfinnan attracts many thousands of visitors from around the world, just to experience the stunning scenery and also the special atmosphere. The famous viaduct carries the railway to Glenfinnan Station across a 1,000 foot span, 100 feet above the ground. Now the steam train runs from here to Fort William and Malag in the summer months, with regular trains available for the rest of the year. And as you guessed it, two of the Harry Potter books took place right here. Eilin Donan is recognised all around the world. Situated on an island at the point where three great sea lochs meet and surrounded by some majestic scenery, it's little wonder that the castle is now one of the most visited and important attractions in the Scottish Highlands. So although it was first inhabited around the 6th century, the first fortified castle 
was built in the mid 13th century and stood guard over the lands of Kintel. Known for its rugged landscapes, the medieval castles, picturesque fishing villages, of course its history and the outstanding scenery. Skye is one of those must-see places if you're planning a trip to Scotland in the new year. The scenery is outstanding with its dramatic coastlines and the stunning geological features. But as I mentioned, there are small interesting villages scattered about the island, such as Portree, which would be a great place to start. And on the edge of the isle lies Neast Point. Now this is the kind of place that leaves you breathless, and not just because you have to trek uphill. The craggy landscape looks like something from a magical realm. It's a great walk for hikers as it passes through some of the most spectacular landscapes in Scotland. As part of the Trotternish Ridge, it has been formed by a massive landslip, which has created high cliffs, hidden plateaus and pinnacles of rock. Now the Kurang is situated in the north of Skye, and the walk is in a loop, returning you back to the same point. York, a beautiful city in the UK with a lot of history as it was founded by the ancient Romans. It's known as one of Europe's most haunted cities, so you can learn a lot about its spooky history via attractions such as guided ghost walks. But the main attraction is York Minster, Durham, a city located in the northeast of England, just south of Newcastle. It's a university town with an incredible amount of history and culture. You have Durham Cathedral, renowned for its incredible architecture, as it stands high above the city. From the outside, it's magnificent, but from its interior, it's even better. Sitting at the heart of Durham's World Heritage Site and occupied continuously since the 11th century, Durham Castle, now home to the students of University College, which is part of Durham University. The Lake District. Now the Lake District is a stunning national park, a mountainous region located in the northwest of England. A popular holiday destination, and famous for its lakes, forests and mountains, and its association with William Wordsworth and other lake poets. So this is where you can discover spectacular landscapes, pretty villages and a very warm welcome, and rich cultural heritage. But there's plenty of opportunities to enjoy outdoor activities, such as boating or paddleboarding or even recreational walks. So there's so much history and natural beauty to discover. But don't forget the villages such as Keswick, Windermere and Hawkshead. Number 4 Whitby. Perched on the northeast coast of England, Whitby is a pretty historic fishing town that you can visit. The skyline is overlooked by the historical ruins of Whitby Abbey, which is a Gothic structure that inspired Bram Stoker to write his classic horror masterpiece, Dracula. But if you fancy a little trip from the town itself, head over to Robin Hood's Bay, which is a picturesque old fishing village on the heritage coast of the North York Moors. Another unique attraction that you might enjoy is to journey to Pont Casochte an aqueduct which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site that spans the Dee Valley. It's a marvel of engineering, designed by Thomas Telford, which carries the Shagoshland Canal over the River Dee. 
so you can take a canal boat ride for a unique and scenic perspective of the surrounding landscape. Number 30. Now everyone has, or mostly, has heard of Northern Ireland's Giant's Causeway, while Benevena remains relatively unknown. Yet both are impressive volcanic landscapes, created by the same lava flows that poured over the ancient plateau. Oh, by the way, it was in Game of Thrones, so that means you have to visit. Built between 1175 and 1490, Wells Cathedral in Somerset has been described as the most poetic of the English cathedrals. It's set in the medieval heart of England's smallest city, and an easy drive from Bristol, Bath or Cardiff. Wells is the earliest English cathedral to be built in the Gothic style. One of Dorset's most photographed and iconic landmarks. For those of you who are not from England, this is a very good destination for you to visit. It's part of the Jurassic Coast World Heritage Site, and it's an extremely popular beauty spot, especially in the summer. Located on Lulworth Estate in South Dorset, the coastline is of such international geological importance and is now part of a family of natural wonders including America's Grand Canyon and Australia's Great Barrier Reef. Rising dramatically from the Somerset countryside, Glastonbury Tor is an iconic landmark shrouded in myth and legend. Offers breathtaking panoramic views of the surrounding landscape and believed to be a place of powerful energy and spiritual significance. And this is the reason why it attracts so many visitors from all walks of life. Another town and civil parish in West Wiltshire, England, just near the border with Somerset. Beautiful and historic buildings, independently run shops, alongside these wonderful cafes, river walks, hidden stairways and unexpected alleyways. Plenty to do. The Old Man of Store. The Old Man of Store is situated in the north of the Isle of Skye, famous for its magnificent scenery and its views. Now the Old Man of Store is a large standing formation of rock, which is part of the Trottenish Ridge created by a massive ancient landslide, like I mentioned for the Kerang, leaving one of the most photographed landscapes in the world. Scotland's most scenic and most famous glen. Not a valley, like I said last time, it's a glen. And it's also one of the country's most dramatic. The deep valley and towering mountains of Glencoe are the most iconic scenery in the Highlands and something which you could hardly miss if you tried. Carved out centuries ago by icy glaciers and volcanic explosions, driving through these giants is like an otherworldly experience. When it comes to castles, Aberdeenshire is the place to visit. With over 260 castles, stately homes and ruins, it's known as Scotland's castle country. An iconic ruin, once an impregnable fortress, owned by one of the most powerful families, is perched on a headland with dramatic sheer cliffs on all sides. In 900 AD, a Viking raid killed the king, a raid in which the castle was destroyed. But after it was rebuilt, the castle was fought over for hundreds of years. Now, while Scotland has more picture-perfect stretches of sand than you can count, Luskintyre Beach on the west coast of South Harris 
in the Outer Hebrides has frequently been named as one of the best beaches in the world, and it's easy to see why. Striking white sands, turquoise waters, as if it belonged in the Caribbean. So forget Spain this year, and head to Luscantia Beach. Now this city has an abundance of history, top quality attractions and very beautiful architecture. Edinburgh is the location that you won't forget in a hurry. You can explore the medieval old town and the elegant Georgian new town, which sit side by side. So the city is famous for two other attractions, the Royal Mile, which is at the heart of Edinburgh's old town. And then you have Edinburgh Castle, right at its head. And its name comes from its tradition as a route for kings and queens for the last 500 years. Now, another interesting location is perched along the breathtaking Pembrokeshire coast in Wales. You should visit the town called Tenby. Surrounded by medieval walls, opened up to the waters and cosy harbour with highlights such as Castle Beach and the lively North Beach. You will notice the picture pastel coloured Georgian houses that's dotted along the shoreline. So with a castle that's full of tales, a seaside town, what better way than to try something new? Ben Nevis and Fort William. Standing at over 1,344 metres, Ben Nevis is the highest peak in the United Kingdom and is the mountain that all visiting climbers want to conquer. Now many base themselves at the nearby town Fort William to give them a few days to explore the imposing peak and its tranquil neighbour, Glen Nevis. So if you're considering tackling the climb, just make sure you go fully prepared. Now although this castle isn't perfectly intact, Kilhoon Castle still packs a very photogenic punch. The ancient ruined building sits majestically on a rocky peninsula at the northeastern tip of Loch Awe in the Argyle and Butte region. So it was built in the mid-1400s as the base of the mighty Campbells of Glenochy for 150 years and it wasn't abandoned until the 1700s but today it sits perfectly framed by its truly stunning surroundings and one of Stirling's most striking visits. It commemorates the life of Sir William Wallace, the Patriot and Martyr who came to be saluted as Scotland's national hero. Now inside the monument you'll find yourself transported back to the 13th century as you discover the story of the warrior who led the Scottish army to victory at the Battle of Stirling Bridge. So point to note, there is a shuttle bus that you can take up the hill if you don't fancy the walk, seeing as there are over 200 steps broken up by exhibition floors. But I have to tell you the views are stunning. Staiths. Clinging to the hillside, Staiths, on the Yorkshire coast north of Whitby, is an unmissable destination to explore. From the winding cobbled streets to the charming 18th century cottages, you will find this coastal village is full of character. It was once one of the largest fishing ports in the northeast. Now this beautiful area encompasses thousands of square miles of moors, valleys, hills and pretty villages. 
and southeast on the River Wharf, you have the Bolton Abbey Estate, which includes the ruins of a 12th century monastery, which could be something you want to visit. But the area is one of the best places to see in Northern England. But one of Yorkshire's best kept secrets is the Scarhouse Reservoir. It's a remote and peaceful area surrounded by impressive scenery. And along this route, you can admire the impressive architecture of its neighboring reservoir with dramatic arches across the spillway, which flows right into Scar House. Bamborough is a tiny little place that has some of the best coastline and castle around. So if you've seen the Netflix program The Last Kingdom, you would know Uhtred of Babenburg. So he did exist, but we call it Bamborough Castle. Only about 16 minutes from the Holy Island, it's quite easy to partner a trip to Bamborough Castle with a wider trip across the Northumberland. But take some time to enjoy the stunning beaches around the castle too. They're totally pristine and offer some of the gorgeous views over the castle itself. Hebden Bridge. Now this is a whimsical little market town. Hebden Bridge's Rochdale Canal is nothing but a totally gorgeous spot to visit. But Hebden Bridge's cobbled lanes quickly give way to that glorious Yorkshire countryside. The nearby Hardcastle Crags, owned by the National Trust, are a must visit. As it boasts a beautiful wooded valley, complete with tumbling streams and 15 miles of footpaths and walkways. Scarborough. So, this is a seaside town located in Yorkshire and is best known for being the largest holiday resort on the Yorkshire coast, as well as being popular for fishing. So if you're a big fan of traditional British seaside experience, then yes, Scarborough is where you need to head to. But no trip can go without visiting Scarborough Castle. Built in the 12th century, it's set in a stunning location and has beautiful panoramic views over the dramatic coastline. Malham is a small village at the southern base of the Yorkshire Dales. A very pretty place, surrounded by limestone dry walls and with a stream running right through the middle of the village. It's been a settlement for at least a thousand years. You can even see traces of Iron Age boundaries that are still visible today. From 100 years ago, Malham was a place of mills and mines. But nowadays, some of the main activities are hill farms and tourism. Now there's a beautiful avenue of beech trees that was planted by a family in the 18th century called the Stuart family. And its sole intention was to be a compelling landscape feature just to impress people as they approached the entrance to their Georgian mansion. And two centuries later, the tree remains a beautiful site and has become one of the most photographed places in Northern Ireland. And more of a fun activity to do, you could try the Peace Maze in Castle Wellham Forest Park, located in County Down, Northern Ireland. You see, it's one of the largest permanent hedge mazes, and it represents the path for a peaceful future for Northern Ireland. You can try, basically, to solve your way to the Peace Bell, right in the centre of the maze. Now, if you're heading towards Inverness, Urquhart Castle a ruin that sits beside Loch Ness in the Highlands of Scotland is one of Scotland's largest castles. 
Its ruins include a tower house with a fantastic view right over the Great Glen. Now the castle dates back between the 13th and 16th century, and it played a significant role in the wars of Scottish independence. It then became a royal castle, raided several times by the Macdonald Earls of Ross. So the castle was abandoned in the 17th century, but now it sits as a ruin but open to us visitors. The Orkney Islands The Orkneys are an island archipelago located off the northeastern shores of Scotland. Consisting of over 70 islands, it's a real fabulous destination, especially during the summer months. But Orkney's most famous landmark, the Old Man of Hoy, is an imposing 450 foot sea step. On the island of Hoy, carved from layer upon layer of old red sandstone. Next, we'll take a look at the Kelpies. In Falkirk, Scotland, along the picturesque banks of the Forth and Clyde Canal, stand the Kelpies. Now these are striking steel sculptures that portray horse heads. Now these colossal artworks reaching skyward symbolize the strength and essence of Scotland drawing in visitors from all around the world. So I have to say it is much better when you are there live and you can see how actually massive it really is. Located within the Highlands, particularly in the picturesque region of Westeros, Loch Caron highlights its natural beauty. So as you stand by its shores, you'll find yourself surrounded by gently rolling hills. The loch is extremely tranquil. And this is the type of holiday where you get to see one of Scotland's most scenic corners. So this destination is perfect for those of you who love nature and want to be just surrounded by a quiet escape. Perched high on Castle Hill, central Scotland, stands the majestic Stirling Castle. This historic fortress surrounded by hills echoes with tales of Scottish royalty. Its regal towers and battlements not only offer breathtaking views, but also invite you to step back in time and immerse yourself in Scotland's rich history. You know, infamous deeds took place here, like murders of the Earls, but it was also a childhood home of some of the most famous people in Scottish and British history. The rich maritime history and quirky but slightly bohemian charm, Whitstable has plenty to offer all year round. The town boasts a number of fantastic beaches, bursting with traditional British seaside charm. Tankerton Beach is an unspoiled pebble beach that offers some of the finest views on the Kentish coast. The many alleyways were historically made for walkways down to the sea and used by smugglers to weave in and out. A city on the River Cam in eastern England, home to the prestigious University of Cambridge. Founded in 1209 and consisting of 31 colleges, Cambridge University is consistently ranked among the top universities in the world. Now this is a very popular day trip from London. You can visit impressive colleges such as the Trinity College and King's College, whose chapel that you simply must see. That would even be enough to fill your day alone. A beautiful cathedral and university city with a fascinating history. Located in the heart of the West Midlands, on the banks of the River Severn. At its centre is a magnificent cathedral, perched along the riverbank, dominating the skyline for miles around. Now they say the cathedral is one of the loveliest in England, and dates back to Norman times. Now perched atop a hill in Gateshead, England, you will find the Angel of the North, which dominates the horizon 
with its striking size and silhouette. So it's not just a sculpture, it's a friendly giant or cool landmark that you can't miss. And it's like the North's way of saying, hey, you've arrived, welcome. Next up is Cardiff. Now the good thing is, it's only around a two hour journey from London by train. It's the capital and the largest city of Wales. So this city mixes its historic roots as seen in landmarks like Cardiff Castle. Perhaps the most photogenic of the mini castles in Wales. So this is a must visit as it's one of the top attractions in the city. If you're looking for a place to visit in the Midlands, then add Warwick to your list. Now this is a magnificent castle where you're able to step back in time. A historical gem inviting you to experience the magic of medieval England. So as you explore its ancient halls and climb into its towers, you'll find yourself immersed in a captivating journey through the ages. Now what sets Warwick Castle apart is its ability to make history tangible and exciting for everyone. You see, you can have an immersive experience when you visit the castle. Located in the heart of England, along River Avon, Stratford-upon-Avon is a perfect place to visit if you are a big fan of Shakespeare and English literature. After all, this was the birthplace of this wonderful poet. And naturally, the town has been attracting art and theatre fanatics for more than 250 years. So you can visit all the houses relating to Shakespeare in and around Stratford-upon-Avon, including Shakespeare's birthplace, Anne Hathaway's cottage and gardens, or even Nash's house. So this is a great destination for outdoor adventures such as hiking, camping, cycling, or even rock climbing and pretty awesome in the summer. The Peak District is home to some picturesque and charming villages like Castleton and Bakewell, but it also you have Chatsworth Hall and Haddon Hall, which are two magnificent stately homes. So if you do prefer history to outdoor adventures, you can take a look at those. But I have to say that having a car is probably the best way to get around especially if you want to see many things in a short space of time. Now, if you've never had any knowledge about Northern Ireland, one thing that you can take away from this is how beautiful the rugged coastline is. And one attraction that you can visit is Severin Castle which stands as a very weathered sentinel overlooking the wild beauty of the Atlantic Ocean. With what remains, it's ancient stone walls telling tales of centuries past. Now the castle ruins offer a little glimpse into the rich history and the lore of the region. But it's the surroundings that exude a very serene and untouched quality. Next up is the Giant's Causeway. I probably think it's the most visited or the most popular attraction in the country. And it's a geological wonder that defies imagination. Hexagonal basalt columns rise like ancient sentinels, and it forms a very surreal landscape along the dramatic Causeway coast. Carved by volcanic forces millions of years ago, so what's really interesting and quite fun is you can see the waves crash against the shore and it's quite an extraordinary display of nature. Wrapped in a beautiful countryside, Ludlow is just another must visit town in Shropshire where you can experience a taste of England's rich history and its heritage. You know, there's a famous quote about Ludlow by an English composer called Ralph Vaughan Williams. 
Ludlow is the loveliest town in England. And there's definitely some truth to it. The town is known for its well-preserved medieval architecture and beautiful Broad Street. It's also surrounded by the river, the perfect location for yet another of Shropshire's castles. So for a small town, it packs a punch and you will definitely be occupied for a few hours, including a visit to Ludlow Castle. Now, although not as well known as some of the other major cities in the Midlands, such as Birmingham or Derby, but Lincoln is one of the best places to visit in the area. This historic city is known for its medieval cathedral, which towers over the red brick houses of the surrounding historic quarter. Did you know that from 1311 to 1549, this was the tallest building in the world? And during the Second World War, Lincoln was the heart of bomber country. You see, the city was home to numerous air bases and Lincoln Cathedral was a popular navigational beacon. Litchfield As I block my ears to the sound of consistent construction where I live, tucked away in the heart of Staffordshire lies a charming city of Litchfield which offers quite a nice escape from the hustle and bustle of everyday life, especially mine. But it's steeped in history. It's a compact city, but it's an absolute gem for history and those seeking a tranquil getaway. Now, Litchfield's claim to fame is its stunning medieval cathedral. It's a masterpiece of Gothic architecture that greases the city's skyline. Now I'm pretty sure that many around the world have never heard of this town and it's big enough to be interesting, but small enough to have maintained its charm. Shrewsbury has a fascinating history. It was the birthplace of a super famous scientist that you may have heard of, Charles Darwin. Now he was a naturalist who developed the theory of natural selection and is regarded as one of history's most famous biologists. Perth, a city that was once the capital of Scotland, located on the banks of the River Tay. Visit to this city and you'll be able to experience it all. Whether you choose to crawl the countryside or enjoy the buzzing atmosphere in the city alone, there's still beautiful hills, mountain ranges, and it's quite a beautiful city. It's also home to many fascinating historical events. For example, it was the first capital of Scotland before Edinburgh. Before Edinburgh became the nation's lead city in 1437. So this destination is just something different and something new to try on your next holiday to Scotland. Now for number 74, we have a very unique location. And it's set on the stunning coastline of North Wales, an Italianate style village called Port Merion. And it was built by a man called Sir Clough William Ellis. So the reason why this destination is so unique is because unlike the traditional Welsh villages that are characterized by Stone's cottages, this village is particularly designed in a way to mimic an Italian village, complete with colourful buildings and very intricate details. There are many places to visit in England, and I can pretty much tell a lot of people outside of the country fail to really understand the beauty of what this country holds. And one of those areas is the Seven Sisters. Now this is a famous landmark in England, and it refers to a series of iconic chalk cliffs that are located along the Sussex coastline in the South Downs National Park. Now the cliffs are named after the seven prominent peaks, which are a breathtaking natural attraction, and of course offers some of the most stunning views of the English Channel. It's a great day trip from London, and the area is extremely popular for coastal walks, hiking trails and 
it allows you the opportunity to see the, the scenic side of the region. Now, if you thought the Seven Sisters was beautiful, marvel at the stunning coastal spectacle of Old Harry Rocks. And these are a series of towering chalk formations standing sentinel near Swanage. Now, over the centuries, these were carved by the elements, dramatic cliffs offering the most breathtaking views of the Jurassic Coast, and of course, the English Channel. So the unique shapes and natural beauty alone make Old Hairy Rocks a must visit. Now, along the rugged landscapes of northern England, you can explore Hadrian's Wall. It was built by the Romans to guard the northern frontier of their empire. So the fortification stretches across picturesque hills and dales, and for those of you who love long walks in the countryside, this is a great attraction to head to. If you ever wanted to see one of the country's most formidable medieval fortresses, then you have to visit Kenilworth Castle. An imposing sandstone ruin just on the edge of Kenilworth town. So it's famous for being the home of Robert Dudley, the Earl of Leicester, who was a childhood friend of Queen Elizabeth I, yet had a close and complex relationship. But even though much of it has gone to ruin, there are still walking trails, grand manor houses, and nice gardens to visit. In the heart of the Cairngorms National Park, you will find the Bridge of Dee, which is near Braemar. And it's in a very idyllic setting amidst the Scottish Highlands. So this stone bridge spans across the pristine river. And what you'll find here are panoramic views of the surrounding mountains. But also standing proudly in Braemar, you would find Braemar Castle, near the Bridge of Dee, which is not only an architectural marvel, but also a witness to centuries of Scottish history. Now the castle dates back to the 17th century and has served various purposes, such as being a hunting lodge and a fortress. So you can explore the well-preserved rooms, each telling a tale of the past. Iron Bridge. Now this sits within the Iron Bridge Gorge, a UNESCO World Heritage Site and is famous for its Iron Bridge, which was built in 1779 and it was the first arch bridge in the world made of cast iron. Now this is widely considered as the birthplace of the Industrial Revolution, so if you're interested in Britain's industrial past, then I'm pretty sure you need to put this place on your list to visit. Dominating the East Lothian coastline, you'll find Tantalum Castle which stands as a magnificent example of a curtain wall castle. Built in the 14th century, its very robust curtain wall encapsulates the whole site, offering a very formidable defence against potential invaders. So this marvel not only showcases the military prowess of its time, 
but also provides you and me with a glimpse into the strategic innovations that defined medieval Scottish castles. So when it comes to visiting this destination, it's all about Arundel Castle, the gardens and the cathedral. The castle was built by Roger de Montgomery in 1067, and now the seat of the Duke of Norfolk. So this could be the perfect day trip from London just for you. A small New Age town that lies in southwest England, about three and a half hour drive from London. Now there are several points of interest here. The first thing you'll want to do is to take a trip to Glastonbury Abbey. Now what makes the Abbey one of the most popular Glastonbury attractions is that it ties to King Arthur. Legend has it, King Arthur and his wife Guinevere are buried on the grounds. Famous as a centre for walkers, Winchcombe has a wonderful timeless quality about it. With Cotswold stone cottages standing side by side with the distinctive black and white half timbered buildings. You can browse the inns, the restaurants, the tea rooms that sit among three main streets, full of character of times past. But there is another attraction, located only 8 miles from the picturesque Broadway. Sudley Castle and its gardens, a much loved family home, as well as a popular visitor attraction. Now this is a must see on any visit to the Cotswolds, as the castle played an important role in England's history, boasting royal connections that stretch back over a thousand years. Located along the stunning coastline of Cornwall, St Ives is a picturesque seaside town that's actually renowned for its artistic charm and the golden sandy beaches. So this is a great opportunity for a summer break in England. And as I was going to St Ives, I met a man with seven wives, and every wife has seven sacks, and every sack has seven cats, and every cat has seven kits. Kits, cat, sacks, wives, how many were going to St Ives? Another destination which I'm pretty sure you will find interesting is to visit the delightful city in England called Hereford and its stunning cathedral. Now Hereford sits right at the heart of the county on the loop of the River Wye and its cathedral is home to two record breakers. Here you can view the incredible and largest surviving medieval map of the world made about 800 years ago. As well as you'll find the biggest chain library on the planet dating from a time when books were so precious that they had to be locked up. So apart from these two fascinating aspects, you can also wander around the half-timbered houses and stroll along the river. Now for those of you who book holidays just seeking adventure, then I suggest you visit Carrickareed Rope Bridge. 
it's suspended above the sea. An iconic bridge that offers not only a wild crossing experience, but some of the most stunning coastal views of the northern Irish coast. I'll be surprised if you don't feel a rush of excitement as you walk across the swaying bridge. But as I said, if it's adventure that you want, this is definitely the place. So a visit to the UK will give you the opportunity to discover the rugged beauty of Snowdonia, which is a national park in Wales, home to beautiful mountains, serene lakes, lush valleys, and it's a haven for those of you who love nature and adventure. You can go on scenic heights, you can enjoy panoramic views from Mount Snowdon, but overall it's the how can I put this? The quiet tranquility of the natural wonders. Clovelly is a harbour village in the Torridge district of Devon, England. It's picturesque, ancient and uniquely special and was once owned by the Queen of England. Clinging to a 400 foot cliff, there are no cars, just donkeys and sledges. Its steep cobbled street tumbles all the way down to the harbour. From Elizabethan days until today, Crivelli has been in private ownership, which has helped preserve its original atmosphere. Another must see place in Wales is Harlech Castle, and it is a medieval masterpiece, and it has a commanding presence a historic fortress offering views of the surrounding landscapes, including the Irish Sea and Snowdonia. It's also part of UNESCO. Now we head to Green Malvern, which is located in Worcestershire, England, surrounded by the Malvern Hills, which are a range of hills in the English counties. Now the Malvern Hills offer stunning views of the surrounding countryside. So this is more of a peaceful retreat, or a taste of the English countryside. Perched on the western tip of the Isle of Wight, the Needles is an astonishing natural spectacle that you won't want to miss. Now these iconic chalk stacks rise majestically from the turquoise waters, and it creates that striking contrast against the backdrop of the English Channel. Now what you will find here is just stunning views of the coastline. So for me, it's an ideal spot for walking around to capture some wonderful photos. Tucked away in the lovely county of Kent, Leeds Castle tells a story of medieval splendour. So it's surrounded by a moat and very picturesque gardens. And on the inside, you can explore the majestic rooms, wander through the historic halls, and you will gain a sense of England's rich history. And another coastal attraction that you can visit is on the rocky island in Cornwall's Mounts Bay. And it's called St. Michael's Mount, which is a fusion of history and natural beauty. Connected to the mainland by a causeway at low tide and a boat at high tide. It's an iconic castle and one of the best experiences that you can go on. Located on the Isle of Skye, you will find Dunvegan Castle. Now this is a stronghold with a captivating history and is one of the oldest continuously inhabited castles in Scotland. Inviting you to step back in time by exploring its historic rooms, its beautiful gardens and the renowned fairy flag.
and now we come to a couple of destinations in the Cotswolds. Amidst the rolling hills, you will find the village of Stanton. Quaint streets lined with honey-hued cottages. It's a real glimpse into the quintessential English countryside. And then you continue your Cotswold adventure to the village of Withington, where you'll feel that sense of tranquility. So if you're looking for small parish churches, tiny little shops, and that village feel, then visiting right in the heart of Cotswolds is a perfect way to do that. And these two villages are a real hidden gem. And finally, we're going to end with visiting the great outdoors. Located not too far from the town of Keswick, you can visit the stunning Cat Bells Mountain Walk in the Lake District in Cumbria. It's a picturesque hike offering magnificent views of the surrounding fells. The trail is relatively short, but the scenery is nothing short of spectacular. So whether you're into hiking or not, you can simply have a very stress-free stroll amongst the beauty of the Lake District. <laughs> 